Hi everyone, my name is Kim Nicholson from KimNick.com and this is Redefining Wellness. So today I'm going to talk to you about New Year's resolutions. I love new beginnings because, well, it's that time of the year and we all make those promises to ourselves to bring positive changes to our health and our wellness. And uh, these promises are really actually good for you because you're adopting new uh, healthy approaches to um, several different pillars of wellness. So, but there is a problem with them. Uh, the studies show that 50% of people who make resolutions fail. Actually, it's more like 54%, but I'm trying to be positive here. <laughs> and so today, um, what I want to do with you is to kind of kind of have you think about your resolutions. And hopefully I can make a difference in your resolutions. But before we get started, I have to share something with you. I did a TCA peel about two days ago. So my skin feels like it's about to crack and start to peel off. So this is not my normal skin. So I'm doing a video on that too, and you'll be able to see that one in a later video show. So, all right, let's get back to New Year's resolutions. So what I want to share with you is that I've been doing, uh, I've been working, I've been a wellness practitioner for over 30 years now. And this time of the year, every time I worked with one of my clients, they would um, always come to me and we'd always talk about resolutions and things like that. And one thing that they would ask me is, well, do you think I need a home gym? Well, I personally love home gyms. And so I would tell them, yeah, you know, let's, I can design you a home gym. Matter of fact, I've designed uh, home, uh, fitness studios for many, many organizations, many big health clubs out there. But when it comes to home gyms, one thing I always said was, you know what? A lot of people get fitness equipment for the holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever it may be. And we all start off with these wonderful, great intentions. And matter of fact, January, when I used to teach in fitness clubs, January, February, March, the cl my classes were packed. You had to make a reservation to get into my class. But then somewhere around April and May, you don't see the regulars anymore. They start to die off. And I don't mean that literally. I just mean they stop showing up. So what I would tell people, and I've all actually done this myself, is if you really want to buy fitness equipment at a really good price, I mean, I'm talk, we're talking gently used fitness equipment, wait till May or June, because that's when people realize that they're not making that commitment towards health and wellness and their their treadmill has become nothing but you know an extra closet to throw their towels and their robes and their clothes over so that's a good time to buy those things but i'm hoping by sharing my secrets to sticking to your resolutions that i will see less of this equipment being sold on craigslist or ebay this year so let's get down to it so the problem is, is that this year, um, I would like you to shift your perspective on when it comes to um, resolutions. So for example, uh, some of the most common resolutions are to exercise more, lose weight, reduce stress, sleep more, maybe take better care of your skin. Do those sound familiar? Do those sound like some of your resolutions? Well, I've heard them for years and years and years. And they're actually great resolutions, but the problem is the process and getting there. So what I would like you to do to make your resolutions different this year is to shift your perspective on each one of these. So I'm gonna take a few of these and we're kind of break it down. I'm gonna kind of shed a new light on these for you and hoping to inspire you to stick to these resolutions throughout the entire year and to actually uh, transform them into uh, behaviors or a part of your lifestyle. So what I'd like to do is to take, instead of saying something like, I'm going to exercise more, we're gonna shift our perspective and we're going to say, how about instead of saying exercise more, let's say move more, sit less. So if you had that particular resolution, I mean, if you said that almost like a mantra to yourself every day, it's a great reminder to move more and sit less. 
Um, how about if you had one that you had said, uh, I get to exercise every day, rather than looking at exercise as a punishment, which some of you do, look at it as a gift. Your body is able to exercise. I have a great story for you. Um, a friend of mine that I had in Montreal, um, very good, very good good friend of mine. She was a lot younger than me. And um, when we met together, she said she started running because her mom started, her mom was a runner. And so one time I met up with her and um, she was drenched. It was raining that day. And she said, I said to her, why are you so wet? And she goes, well, I went for a run. And she goes, we were stopping to get coffee. And she goes, uh, and I didn't have time to go home and take a shower. So I just thought I'd meet you here at the cafe. So I, as we sat down and had our cup of coffee, I said to her, why, I mean, I'm, I admire you that, I admire you that you were running in the rain. And she started tearing up and she says, let me tell you something. She goes, um, you know, my mom was a runner. And I'm like, yes, of course, I know your mom's a runner. And she goes, well, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer about two months ago. And she says she's now undergoing chemotherapy and radiation and she's had a few surgeries and she can't run anymore. So I run for her. And when she said that to me, it just, it just penetrated through me. I'm like, that is such a beautiful reason to exercise. So it doesn't have to be that dramatic for you, but if you sit back and you think of the beauty of what exercise can do for every cell in your body, every organ in your body, every muscle in your body, your skeletal system as well. It's really a beautiful thing. So again, it's all back on shifting your perspective. Um, another thing would be for exercise is how about just saying to yourself that I'm gonna spend 30 minutes outdoor every day every day. Think about it. When you go outside, you just don't sit there, of course. Well, maybe you do if you're in Cabo and you're laying on a lounge chair <laughs> for 30 minutes or more. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you go outside, what do you do? You garden, you swim, you hike, you bike, you walk, you're moving. Very few people are actually just sitting on their yard. <laughs> They're sitting in their yard. So um, just having your resolution be 30 minutes of some sort of activity outside every day. Now, how about let's kind of tackle, that kind of gives you an idea of where I'm going. Let's go now to the one where instead of, I want to lose weight, um, how about let's shift our perspective and say, instead of I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to incorporate a plant-based diet. You can't help but lose weight when you incorporate a plant-based diet. Now, I know some of you are already saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Well, I actually can't do it either. I tried to be a vegetarian for five years and two of those five years, I was I went total vegan until I went to donate blood at uh, MD Anderson and they rejected my blood because of my iron count was too low. So I went and had a thorough blood exam and they basically told me that I have to incorporate animal protein in my diet. So that's why each one of us are unique and each one of us have a different approach to being a vegetarian. So I hate to use vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian. I don't like those words. I just simply like to tell you eat a plant-based diet. So if you're looking at your plate tonight when you're for dinner or tomorrow for breakfast or lunch, look at your plate and try to uh, set your goal to for at least 80% of the food that you're going to be eating comes from some sort of plant. You can get plant protein, so you can still get your protein, but it just, um, or you can, you can incorporate a small bit of animal protein. So I'll share that. I'll share more with you on, um, animal versus plant protein at a later video. But anyway, that's one way to look at losing weight. Another one would be, let me see here, is to, how about incorporate more water into your uh, diet? That's also an easy way to do it. Um, or how about, let's change your kitchen into a healthier kitchen. I, every week when I go to the market, I have this big bowl 
that I keep in the center of my kitchen island. And like tonight, it has spaghetti squash in there. It has several onions, garlic in there, tomatoes. I keep apples in there. And then by the end of the week, it's empty. I make sure that it's empty. Of course, I also have the things in my refrigerator that need to be refrigerated, such as broccoli and cauliflower and things such as that. But again, I'll be sharing those with you uh, on my website. But anyway, those are, that's a different way of thinking of losing weight. Instead of thinking the negative about losing weight, simply think of one way that you can incorporate into your day-to-day -day basis and use that. How about the resolution of uh, basically reducing stress? Well, I've got a great resolution for that. Make your reservation. I'm going to laugh every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, my family makes me laugh every day. They do things that make me laugh every day. But let's say that I feel stress. There are things that you can do. You can go to your phone. And I actually love animal videos, funny animal videos. So I, I basically uh, on a few of those groups that those animals make me laugh. Or I think of funny things. Um, but laughing every day is a great way to reduce your stress. Another way to reduce your stress is to kind of sit in silence. I sit in silence every morning after my, after, let's see, after I get up, I take my cold plunge in the pool, feed my dogs, have my coffee, read the Bible, write in my journal, then I sit. And it, at first it took me a while to do that. I was doing it for about five minutes. And now I do it, depending on my day and my schedule, I do it for about 15 minutes. And you can pray before you do it. You can some sort of meditation and just simply sit there and embrace the silence. It's a great, great way of, first of all, starting your day. You can also incorporate breath work into it. And it's also a way of just decompressing at the beginning of your day. And at the end of my day, I also do it when I'm done with work. Um, at the end of my day, I like to simply decompress again, going through the breath work. And again, I'll show you some uh, great breathing techniques at a later date, but just decompressing that way with some breath work and then just some simple meditation. Again, it can just be something as simple as just sitting in silence. Um, I also believe that volunteering is a great way to de-stress. I mean, my kids were raised on volunteering and donating money every year to the SPCA. That was their choice. And to this day, they still do it. And what I do is I collect items. If I go to PetSmart or one of the pet stores, I'll buy several things, bring them home with me, and then I drive them there. I love being involved in volunteering at one of the local pet shelters here. Uh, let's see. Some of the things that I have is, oh, I did this uh uh, during, I guess, the whole presidential election, I took a break from social media. Matter of fact, I took a break from all media. And that was wonderful. I had all this extra time on my hands. And it was just nice, again, not to have all the, those people chirping in my ears. And you know, a lot of the people's opinions didn't matter to me at that time. So um, it was really nice to take a break from social media. Again, I hope that kind of gives you an idea of shifting your perspective and what your new resolution should look like. Um, and of course, another big pillar of health for me is to get more sleep. And um, I have a book actually coming out in February of this year. And there's over 100 different strategies of getting a really good night of sleep restorative sleep. So, um, and if you go to my website, kimnick.com, you will see um, each month I do several postings on how to get a better night of sleep. But um, before I get into how to write these, I want to go over a few things with you um, for you to get, think about when you're writing your resolutions. I believe strongly that it's really important to write down your goals. So let's say it's the one that I'm going to spend 30 minutes outside every day. Okay, so I keep, I love journals. Matter of fact, here on my desk, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got eight journals. Actually, I got nine journals, and they're for different things. But I love journals. One's my morning journal, one's my evening journal, one's about what I'm going to write on my website, one's about a prayer journal. 
<laughs> this one is, um, this is the one I write my goals down in. And I'm a strong believer in goals because actually making resolutions or goals or promises, whatever you want to call them, it's just not for you know, January 1st, you can have a goal starting March 15th or July 14th. It doesn't matter. If you've got something that you want to improve in your life, start it then. Make a difference in your life then. But what I do is I have this book and I simply write my goals down and I create kind of a, I call them vision boards with all my books. Um, I have a vision board. Um, board or a storyboard for when I do go to write a book. But I also use that same technique when I'm creating my goals. And uh, some of them are just simply like, I like this look. This is what I want. This is the feeling that I want when I go on this trip. I mean, yes, I do even write goals when I'm traveling, like what I want to see and do when I'm at a certain place. And then um, now, this is a very old book. This is from, I think I started writing this one in 2016, but don't laugh. Uh, but I wanted to get a black card really bad. So um, I found this in a magazine and I pasted it there. So that was part of my vision then. Uh, my other vision was, or my other resolution was to travel more. And then, of course, I wanted, I love sailing and I want to do sailing. And then underneath it, I kind of just wrote a little bit about each one of those goals. So, uh, yeah, that's how I did my vision board. It's actually a vision book, but it's a fun way to actually incorporate your resolutions. Um, and it's a great way to stick, stick to it. I remember my very first book when I came out, I had little sticky notes everywhere about my resolution. I see this book being published and I think it was like 2006 was my first year, the first year that my book, my first book came out anyway. So write it down somewhere. Another one is to check in regularly with your motivation. I know uh, it takes about 21 to 30 days for a behavior to become part of, or to, for a, a, uh, for an, an exercise or resolution to become a behavior. So it does take a while. So you do have to have patience, but it is possible. But um, check in every once in a while on your emotion about it. How are you feeling about this particular resolution? Do you need to tweak it some? Um, but you need to check in regularly with it because I think part of the reason why people's resolutions fail is that they just kind of give up. They get tired of it. So maybe at that time you need to tweak it and come up with a better one. Uh, let's see here. Another one would be, besides creating a vision board, would be um, our SMART goals. And I had written this whole thing on SMART goals about, uh, I think it was 2000, 2013. I, like I said, I've worked with over a million people. And back then I was focused on kids fitness and family fitness. And now that I've grown older, I'm, you know, focusing on fitness for anyone 40 plus but anyway, um, I did, I wrote this uh, kind of graphic design about goal setting. And let me go over a few of those things with you. And I'm sure you've probably heard this before, but you want each one of your goals to be a SMART goal. And the reason why is it really clarifies what you're really trying to accomplish. So for me, when I write goals with my clients, the, one of the first things I want to do is um, I want to make sure the goal is specific. This is the who, what, where, when, how, and why this particular goal. So let's go back to the example that I used earlier about losing weight. So if, if one of my clients would say to me, well, I want to lose weight. I would say to them, okay, how much weight do you want to lose and by what date? And we'll go through a few of these with you, but um, you want to be the, you want to be specific. And if you want this uh, goal setting chart that I have, if you go to my website, kimnick.com, you can uh, download it for free. Anyway, so SMART, the first on this, it's, it's an, uh, uh, so S would stand for SMART. M would stand for measurable. You want to make sure that you can measure it. You want to see how you're improving. So let's say that it, we go back to the weight loss game um, or re our resolution. You want to make sure that you put in, I want to lose 10 pounds by um, June 1st. Okay, so it's measurable. 
10 pounds and you've also have it in a time in a time restricted time frame with being June 1st. Okay, action oriented. That's one of my favorites. This is where you can really get creative. You can think of all the ways that it takes that you could do to get you to that particular goal. And I love that one. And if you need help, you could just uh, email me and I'll be able to help you out if you get stuck. Realistic, you want to make sure that your goal is realistic. I would have people come to me and say that they need to lose 10 pounds in a month because they have a special event to get to and they want to get into this particular dress, whatever it may be. That's not healthy and it's not realistic. So you want to be realistic with your goals because otherwise you're going to become disappointed, disillusioned, and you'll be part of that 50% of people who fail at the resolutions. You don't want that. And of course, the last one is timely. You do want to set a particular time frame on this particular goal. Now, it can extend, it can extend all year long, but uh, if, if that's the case, then that's what you would write. So if you're, again, just to recap, I want you to take, think about your, your resolutions or the promises that you're making to yourself this year. And I want you to approach them in a more positive, energetic, achievable way. And to do that, next thing you're going to do is to write them or is to shift your perspective to a more positive resolution. Then once you've got those, and of course, you can do more than one resolution. It could be more than one promises. I don't ever recommend that you go over three to five, but you definitely don't want to, um, you don't want to go over that. It's going to be overwhelming. And I promise you, you will fail. And I don't want that to happen to you. So you can write about three to five resolutions. And then I'd like you to put them in the smart format. So specific, measurable, action oriented, realistic, and put a time on it. So I hope that helps you in clarifying some of your resolutions and I will be checking in on you. And uh, for more information about health and wellness, please check out kimdick.com. Thanks for watching today. See you soon.